Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a build that I have for Greystone. I've been playing a lot of uh, the non-meta heroes lately because things have been getting a little bit boring. Uh, and this is a deck that I tweaked based on a gameplay that I'll be posting tomorrow. Uh, so it's an order and growth build. It is predominantly carry-ish in nature. Okay, so we'll go over every card. I'll show you what I tend to run from the moment I'm able to get the first three cards, the first three main cards, uh, and then talk about uh, some examples of what you can use for full builds. So, first up we have Lamplighter, because we're in order, might as well grab a Lamplighter. It's really cheap, if you have a free slot, it's good to grab it. You can uh, go and ward Fangtooth. Uh, we have Coin Master, which is actually my starting card. Uh, because it's very good, you're going to go into uh, Vitality to start off with and grab some extra coinage. Then we have Exoskeleton. I don't tend to grab this very often because it's a bit lackluster, um, but it is cheap. It helps you tank a little bit more damage, uh, and it's there to fill the deck up. Then we have Flame of Zekin. After Coin Master, Zekin is the first card that I try to get. Uh, and I try to stack this up as much as possible. Uh, being the offlaner, you are, uh, well, this is where I play Greystone. Being an offlaner, you'll be able to get to Fangtooth quite quickly, and stacking this up as much as you can can help you secure as many Fangtooths as possible. Then we have Greenspring. That's uh, one of the other cards that I try to get for my starting build. Uh, it's going to give you 8.4 health regen while out of combat. Then we have Growth Totem, which is the third of my sort of early to mid game deck. Uh, it's going to give you 0.7 power and 20 max health every minute. I tend to keep this on the whole game, uh, but these three cards, Zekin, Greenspring and Growth Totem, tend to be my early to mid game deck. Then we have Flag Bearer, as I've said a million times, it is a very underrated card, it's very very good, it gives you 29 attack speed, which is huge. That uh, gives you two passives. Nearby allied minions gain 150 max health and 10% movement speed, which helps for you to push lanes. Uh, and uh, minions buff me. You gain 25 basic damage while near an allied minion. So that is quite good because that uh, translates to 25 power, basically. Then we have Vital Waters. It's a pretty decent card uh, to couple with Greenspring uh, to get your health back up if you're not going to be running Flame of Zekin. Uh, or if you've turned it off and you don't have anything uh, to spend on one of your end game cards. Then we have Sacred Alchemy, shields for 20% of basic damage dealt, Trapper, basic attacks reduce uh, enemy movement speed by 2% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 10 times, so that's 20% movement speed taken off them. Uh, at 10 stacks, you actually root your target for a second. Knight of Asher, which is one of the most underrated power cards in the game. Uh, it gives you a flat 19 power, but it also gives you 30 basic damage. This is regardless of whether it's your only card or not. That equates to 49 power towards your basic attack, which is quite huge. 14 attack speed, 24 basic armor. And if you do plan to run this as the only card, it is extremely strong. It makes you very strong, especially when playing a carry. Last card is one of the tribe. Gonna give you another 22 power. 420 health and 15 power for each nearby allied hero. So if you are in a team fight, that is 82 extra basic damage, uh, which is quite huge. So the end game build that I tend to go for would be Growth Totem. So I would go for Flame of Zekin, Greenspring, and Growth Totem for most of the game. And then at some point, I would probably get rid of. Um, uh, the green spring or flame of second depends on whether you've got at least four raptors yet uh, and then grab one of the tribe first uh, because that as i said if you're in a team fight it's going to give you an extra 82 power 82 on your basic attack and then go and get rid of flame of second and get knight of asher so you'll end up with one of the tribe knight of asher and growth totem now not um calculating what point of the game you're in and how much power you're going to get off of growth totem just going off of these two alone that is going to be if you're in a team fight uh, that is going to be 60 power from group power 22 from one of the tribe okay so that's 82 and then knight of asha is technically going to give you uh, 102 plus the 19 
So that's 121 on your basic attack. Um, now, Greystone has at level 20, 136. So you're going to be hitting around about 250 on your basic attack. Uh, easily 250 on your basic attack because you're going to be getting a lot of power off the growth totem as well so he hits very very hard uh, and he has reasonable sustain uh, based on the fact that he has technically one and a half lives uh, per life as long as your ultimate is active so that is the build that I tend to go for um, one of the tribe Night Asher and growth totem but if you want you could get rid of um, uh, Knight of Asher for Sacred Alchemy or get rid of Growth Totem I suppose for Sacred Alchemy. It does make sense considering you're an offlaner and a lot of your time is spent alone but generally what I try to do as an offlaner is push my lane and then group for team fights uh, so one of the tribe becomes more handy but uh, having things like Trapper is a good idea as well so you could definitely go for Growth Totem, Sacred Alchemy and Trapper or you know any combination but the one that I want you to try is one of the tribe Knight of Asher and Growth Totem. So moving on we have our gems we have three into agility the first one is lifesteal at your slot 13 uh, the other options are mana generator uh, which is definitely definitely a good shout because he does need a little bit of mana um, his make way tends to use up quite a lot of his mana uh, your other option is obviously multi-shot, which we're not going to do because he is a uh, melee hero. Then we have, in, no, we don't have empowered rounds. We have piercing basic, which the only other options are empowered round or duelist. I just tend to think that uh, piercing basic, especially considering we're going for high uh, basic attack damage, piercing basic is going to be the best bet. And then I actually go for relentless pursuit. I know a lot of people like critical hits and bounty stalker. Uh, but I think Relentless Pursuit is just a little bit better considering I like to use him to chase people down. Then in Vitality we have Mana Reactor, restore one mana for every six damage taken. It's just going to give you even more mana, so if you wanted to get rid of Lifesteal and go for Mana Generator, uh, if you were getting hit every time you actually hit someone, that's eight. that would be eight mana being restored, which is very, very handy. Uh, the other option is obviously Damage Reduction. Then we have Executioner's Rush. Gain 20% movement speed and 40 power for six seconds after killing an enemy hero. Uh, if we do get a kill within a team fight, that is going to give us an extra 40 power on top of the uh, nearly 120 that we already have, or probably more actually based on growth totem. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you know, that's going to give you upwards of 160 towards your basic attack which is going to put you up around 300 power, uh, 300 basic attacks rather. And then we take Consume the Dead. After killing a hero or minion, you are healed for 10% of the enemy's max health over three seconds. Uh, it just helps, helps for him to stay alive. So with, oh, oh, we've taken it off, oh no. Uh, so with execution is Rush. Your other options are Shredding Strikes, basic attacks move, basic armor. Probably not going to need that because they'll be dead before you even worry about it. Or damage return if you wanted to go for that. Uh, and then as far as consume the dead goes, you have ferocity, uh, which is going to increase your attack speed based on missing health. We're not really going to be building too tanky, but it could still be good. And reflexive purify is actually a decent shout. But I tend to think considering we're not building too tanky with this, uh, consume the dead coupled with life steal is going to help him stay alive a lot longer. So that's my spadstone build, guys. I uh, hope you give it a go. Hope you enjoy it. It hits so stupidly hard, it's not funny. Just keep in mind that you're not the tankiest of tanks, uh, but if you can do your off lane job really well, get your lanes pushing, and group for team fights and come in at the back, go and hit that carry. You're going to take him out super fast. Uh, and hopefully win those team fights. So that's the video guys. That is my deck. Hope you enjoyed it If you did smash the like button, let me comment. Let me know what you think subscribe for more Paragon content with that said Thanks so so much for watching. I love your face. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace